So, I'm in this little, um, like, a uh, hostel kind of place in San Francisco. Um, it's small and dirty and ugly, but it's kind of charming. <laughs> there's a lot of people here. Um, most of them are foreigners. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying. I wasn't really expecting to see, like, no Americans in this place, which is weird. Um, I'm gonna go see some of uh, SF today. A very little bit of SF, because uh, I really have uh, the Redwoods planned for today. Um, I booked a hotel. It's about 20 minutes away from the Avenue of the Giants, which is supposed to be like one of the best drives through Redwoods. And then there's two or three national parks in the area that I want to go scope out. So hopefully I can get that done before the sun goes down. Because if last night is any indication, when the sun goes down around here, it gets cold, man. <laughs> I was on the road in the dark for the last about two hours of the trip. And I was freezing. <laughs> I felt like it was winter time back home. Or not quite winter time, but, but I was not geared out for it. You know, like I'm not wearing no winter gear. I'm wearing summer gear. And it's like probably in the 60s or 50s last night I was cold I was cold um, so the thing the thing that got me yesterday you ever feel like you're you, you're like going in circles with something I'm a sucker, man. There are certain things I just can't get away from. You know, I can make progress. I can go, I can go days feeling good about certain situations. And then those people will say something or do something or remind me of something that just starts the cycle all over again. You know, I'm too... I don't know, too accommodating to some people. I don't know. Um, I don't want to be that way. It's just, it seems to be how it goes, you know? <laughs> um, so maybe that's part of why it's a good thing that I'm moving so far away. Because it'll be easier. It'll be easier to not do things for everyone when I'm 2,000 miles away permanently that's that's a horrible thing to say <laughs> that's not really what I mean you know alright uh, so we're done with our night in the European hostel I don't know how I ended up in that place um, I found out when I was packing up right now that I lost one of the bungee cords that's holding my, uh, that's holding my, um, tail bag onto the bike. So now I'm gonna have to figure something else out to make it stay on there and hope it doesn't fly off. I think it'll be okay, but, you know, change is never a good thing on a motorcycle. <laughs> um, we're all loaded up already. going to figure out what to do with this one bungee cord I have to hold it on. And I'm going to go, I think, either to the pier or to go eat. We'll see.
Um, so I waited about two hours for this French toast sampler with fruit and coffee. But it's supposed to be like the best breakfast in the city, so let's see how it goes. I can confirm that that was a pretty rad breakfast. I couldn't finish it. That's not regular bread, man. It's like banana bread and blueberry bread and like extra thick, extra sugary bread that soaks up more sugar from the syrup and has sugar all over it already. <laughs> I'm stuffed. I need to get up and go do stuff before I go into a food coma now. I'm uh, walking up to the Fisherman's Wharf, Pier 39. It's like a touristy spot. There's supposed to be some really nice views from there. So I'll probably go scope it out. I left my bike in front of a Harley shop, which is cool, but they didn't have any chain loop. Like, kind of need chain loop. <laughs> I don't know how a bike shop doesn't have chain loop, but whatever. Um, let's not get run over by this train. <laughs> Uh, see you guys in a bit. Sorry, I just have to do this one more stupid thing.
So, I am at this place called the Valley of the Avenue of the Giants. Uh, it's this scenic route through all these redwoods. And I pulled over just because I wanted to kind of walk in and uh, go see some stuff. I climbed down here once already. I should say slid down here because I wasn't able to stay standing up the first time. <sighs> okay, we're good. <laughs> it's so, so peaceful here, so quiet. And you look at these trees and I mean like, look at this. Like how do you look at something like that and not just have this intense an immense appreciation for things that are bigger than us you know I don't mean that literally but I mean like <laughs> like nature you know like the stuff that I spent four years of my life studying how do you look around and not just be amazed by it all you know because these trees were here way before us and they might be here way after us well I guess at the rate things are going, they're not going to be right. <laughs> I'm barely like a mile or two in to this place. And I already found this awesome area. And I bet there's going to be more of them. I'm a little bummed out. There's only like, there's only a few hours left of daylight. Um, it's about six o'clock. I think it's six o'clock. Let's see. It's seven o'clock. Which means I only have about an hour left of daylight. Which means it's gonna be about an hour or two again of me riding in the dark to get to my hotel. Because <laughs> my hotel is still another hour or so up. Um, geez. This is beautiful. Just look, it's so beautiful. I wish I had gotten here while the sun was out more, you know? I mean, the beach is awesome. But to be honest, I think this is my favorite place that I've seen so far on this trip. It's because I think it fits, it fits what I need better, you know? <laughs> um, the beach is great for being loud and letting loose, but I don't need to be loud and let loose. I'm always loud and letting loose. What I need is peace and serenity, and calmness. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know that I get that on the beach as much as I do here. You know, just it's. I mean, just listen. I mean, I can hear a truck across the street over there. But before that truck was moving, it was almost silent. It's really easy to think out here. It's really easy to just be out here, you know, if that makes any sense. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take a break from recording and I'm gonna try to get some pictures. So uh, I'll pick this up again at a new spot, I think. Peace. All right, we're in a new place. Um, about half an hour, 45 minutes away from my hotel. And I just wanted to stop again to look at some of these. I mean, look at this tree. What well, used to be a tree, this log. It's huge. I mean, this is... It's just all inspiring you know? And it's still like, can you hear? There's nothing out here. It's so quiet. I want to climb this. I'm going to go up to that tree over there. That one. be a lot easier with two hands. I should have put the wrist mount on for this stupid camera instead of carrying it. Whoa, that was a long way down. There we go. I'm kind of walking.
walk up here now. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this is deep. When I was, uh, man, can you imagine how much fun this would be with like a dirt bike? <laughs> Dangerous. Ooh, we started down there. Hey, baby. She's just cooling out. She'll wait for us. Um, when I was, when I was uh, at the last spot taking pictures and stuff, this couple kind of wandered across where I was. They must have thought I was pretty weird. You know, like, I'm over here talking to myself and posing in front of a tripod. But you know, you do what you gotta do when you're alone. Everybody keeps saying more pics or it didn't happen. <laughs> but I need to take more pictures. So I'm doing the best I can. Oh, this is awesome. I love it out here. <sighs> Let me check this out. Let's get on top of this tree trunk. I don't have the thing on the back of this where I can see what it's actually aiming at. So hopefully, oops. So hopefully I can point it correctly. Well, I had planned to start heading back to the bike already, but curiosity got the better of me. I just want to see what's out here. I'll never be here again. I want to soak in as much of it as I can while there's still daylight. You know, this place is so beautiful. Just, I mean, look at that sky. And I'm almost positive that these aren't even the most impressive trees out here. <laughs> I'm about to, I am going to head back in a minute because I want to be able to turn off a few more times and see a few more spots. But, oh wow, look at that. I just walked through a spider web. That's scary. Not because I'm scared of spiders. I'm scared of the giant spiders that probably live out here. I want to go to that hole over there. Look at 
this tree. Look at this tree. It's huge. Let's hug this one. This is for all my fellow biologists, members of Greenpeace, uh, vegetarians, <laughs> vegans. Now that I think about it, I look down there better. I don't think this is the way I came. I think my bike is that way. But now I'm halfway down. It's all good. It's all good. Nobody's gonna die. Nobody's gonna fall down a hill and die. That may be me. Try to go around up here, around there. Wonder if these leaves are poisonous. <laughs> Probably not. But there'd be a sign or something, right? I must say, my motorcycle boots are doing awesome out here. If I was wearing regular shoes, my feet would be torn up probably. The shoes would be torn up, for sure. Hey, look. We kind of made it. Woo! That's how I came up last time. Jeez, that would have been way smarter. Oh, but what about this? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Ta-da! Not dead. <laughs> Look at this tree, man. It's beautiful. She is gorgeous. I could have saved myself a whole lot of time and just hugged this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put the GoPro back on my helmet for a while. The motorcycle seems safer than that, actually. <laughs> See you later, guys. What is up?
<laughs> so it is Tuesday. Jeez, I never know what day it is. Um, it ain't even Tuesday. It is Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday, July thirtieth, and I am in a place called Fortuna, for Fortuna, Fortuna, California. Uh, it's like a little town north of a Redwood National Park. Um, it's, uh, it's like nine o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm staying at a pretty nice hotel. Uh, it's a little more expensive than the ones I had been staying in. You know, I think I paid like 120 or $140 for this room as opposed to the 50 or $60 I've been paying for the other rooms and it shows comfortable it's clean it's quiet <laughs> there's not stains on the floor and stains on the towels and stuff you know um so yesterday was my first day seeing the redwoods and that was fantastic it was amazing uh, but before that was san francisco so i woke up in san francisco and i was in this hostel that was i guess like advertised towards European travelers. Um, I stayed there because it was cheap. <laughs> uh, it was kind of weird. I never really stayed in a place like that before. Where it's like a it's like a giant, I mean, maybe a lot of you have been in these kinds of places, but I haven't. It's like a, it's like a, um, a big house and people stay in these dorm room kind of things, bunk beds. Um, I paid a little bit extra to have like a room to myself. But it was still a communal bathroom, and that's not great in a hotel, you know, like, at least, I know I'm pretty gross when I'm taking a hotel shower. <laughs> I can only assume everybody else is, too. Um, but whatever, you know, it was a bed, and it was an interesting experience. I met some cool people. Um, when I left there, I went to eat breakfast, and... When I looked up, like, good places to go in SF, this place Mama's comes up for, like, you gotta eat breakfast here. But I think everybody else does the same thing I did and looks at the same article I did because that place is packed for breakfast every day. And everybody was definitely, like, a tourist, you know, it was people carrying luggage and everybody's taking pictures outside the restaurant and stuff. Um, I took a picture outside the restaurant. <laughs> um, it was, like, an hour and a half wait hour 45 minute wait just to sit down to eat and I will admit the food was delicious it was the best French toast I've ever had in my life but I don't think that's worth two hours <laughs> not when you're on vacation with a time limit and stuff you know if I had had multiple days in SF maybe it would have been worth it but honestly I feel like I should have gone somewhere else but what's done is done and it was fun uh I liked I liked the food uh, then I went to the Fisherman's Wharf to look off the pier and catch those views. I saw the sea lions. Um, that was great. And from there, I went to this overlook to scope out the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, really cool views. There was this cliff. It was super windy, and I like... I edged all the way to the edge of the cliff, and I was like leaning out over the edge, and you could see like a rocky beach way down below. I found this little like, I don't know, tree stump or something that was kind of sticking out of the of the cliff, and I scoot I scooted myself out to sit on that with my legs dangling off the cliff and stuff, and that was a pretty good adrenaline rush. <laughs> and you guys know I'm um, I'm kind of stupid like that. I like those kinds of thrills. But that was a really cool place to be, too. I spent probably an hour or two hours there. And then around 2 or 3 o'clock, I left SF and started heading north towards... Uh, my, my destination was the Avenue of the Giants, which is a road that leads through one of the last places where there are what they call virgin redwoods. I don't know what that means. I never looked it up. I should look that up. <laughs> um, and uh, that was such a great ride, you know, like... There's some video of it that'll come up the day after this video goes up, probably, depending on how busy I get, because I've been missing uploads and stuff, just because I keep getting sidetracked by, you know, having my vacation instead of documenting my vacation. <laughs> um, but 
I mean, some of those roads, they just, they twist and turn so well. And like, you can take them on a bike, you know, you can take them at 70, 80, 90 miles an hour and you're just like leaning almost totally sideways. I know I'm not leaning almost totally sideways, but it feels that way, you know? Um, it's great. It's so exciting to just have the bike do what it's meant to do. You know, you can feel the tires sticking to the ground and you can feel the bike just responding perfectly to what you're telling it to do. Um, I had a lot of fun. And then I parked a couple of times in, on the Avenue of the Giants and uh, went hiking up into the, into the hills and to see some of the trees. And they're just so big, you know, like when you think about how long these trees must have been here, you know, it's, and it's, it's really something special, especially for somebody like me who's a, who's a biologist, <laughs> you know, I, I studied biology because I love nature and I love life. And when you see that, you know, it's like, this is, this is a, an organism or a plant that figured it out, you know, <laughs> the redwoods are doing it and they're doing just fine. Um, and it's just so, it's quiet out there and it's very, very peaceful. Um, one thing I'll say about like Northern California, I guess this is considered Northern California. Um, like the whole place smells like weed. <laughs> I swear everything smells like weed in Northern California. Um, there are a lot of like hemp shops and medical marijuana dispensaries and stuff. And it just, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with like potheads or whatever. You know, if you, if you like, if you like smoking weed, smoke weed. I don't care what you do with your life. But <laughs> it was just, I never seen, like I was stopping in little tiny towns and back in Texas, you know, little tiny towns are full of extra conservative people. Up here, little tiny towns are full of, like, hippies. <laughs> and that's cool. Like, like I'm down with that. Let's all be hippies. Nobody gets hurt. You know, everybody smokes weed and sings songs. <laughs> um, people are really nice. You know, you just start a conversation with a random stranger at a gas station. Uh, I bumped into two bikers yesterday from Alaska after I... So I got a speeding ticket yesterday. That was a bummer. But I was only going like 80 some when the cop pulled me over. It could have been one of the moments when I was going like 150. And that would have been really bad. And he kind of hassled me because like he asked for my insurance card. And in Texas, you don't have to carry an insurance card anymore. They can look it up in a computer system. And I said, I said, oh, I'm from Texas. Like they just look it up in the computer. Can you do that? And he looks at me. He's like, well, you don't, you're not in Texas anymore, boy. And I, I said, oh, no, no, I don't mean like I moved here from Texas. I mean like I'm passing through from Texas, and I don't think he liked that. <laughs> um, and then I don't have my title with me. Like, who, who goes on a long road trip on a motorcycle with the title to the motorcycle? You know how many things I've lost on this road trip? How many things have just flown, flown out of a bag or gotten soaked in the rain? You know, like, nah, I'm not carrying that title with me. And then he has me on my license plate. He said, uh, he said, uh, do you know that I have to be able to see your license plate? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, well, can I see your license plate? And I said, well, I've asked some of the police officers in Houston and they usually tell me it's fine as long as they can see it when they get off. And he says, no, I need to be able to see it before I pull you over in case you decide to run off on me. I said, yes, sir. You know, I'm just, I mean, I got an uncle that's a cop. I know like they, they have to be the way they are because sometimes they get crazy people. So I try to just be respectful, let him do his job. He wrote me my ticket and then I pulled off at the next town to get gas and, you know, calm down a little bit, get my, get my wits back. Cause you know, normally I'm pretty conscious of like watching for cops and stuff, you know, but I'll admit, uh, I had started kind of zoning out about that time. Like I was starting to fall asleep. I was like shaking myself really hard and, you know, making a lot of noise, trying to keep myself awake. And I was like, I was drifting. Uh, and I was drifting when I saw the cop lights flashing in my, in my mirror and getting off, you know, that kind of woke me up and I stopped and got something to eat and kind of got my head back in the game, you know, because I could have really hurt myself if I had kept going the way I was, you know, I was, I was not in good shape. I was just tired, I think, you know, um, and it's when I pulled off there that I met some, I met some bikers from Alaska. And when they said from Alaska, I thought they meant they had rode down here from Alaska. And I was like, wow, that is so impressive. You know, uh, and they were riding cool bikes. They were riding like 1400 uh, sports bikes, beautiful bikes. 
um, I was jealous. <laughs> um, and they were heading the opposite direction. They were heading south. Uh, they were contemplating whether or not they wanted to go all the way to Anaheim. And I was like, I was like, you know, I've been, I've been pretty lucky so far. You know, you guys probably have more miles than me on this trip. I'm at like 2,500, maybe 3,000. And they were like, oh no, you have way more than we do. Um, because apparently they bought the bikes in Seattle and just started riding. And I don't know, they're like, I don't know who knows how much money they got. Maybe they're like ship captains in Alaska or something, you know? Um, they said they went down to Alaska, bought the motorcycles, and then started riding. They had 10 days to do whatever they wanted. That sounds pretty cool. Hopefully when I'm their age, because they were a little older than me. Hopefully when I'm their age, I can be like that. Like, oh, uh, no, nah, I just I just flew to this city, bought a motorcycle, and took 10 days to do whatever I wanted. <laughs> um, the way this trip is going is definitely the kind of vacation I want to take again. Uh... If I ever meet a girl that's into motorcycles, maybe we'll go together. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, the, like, the Redwoods were a great place for, like, reflection and relaxation. You know, I'm going to probably stop at another national park today before I head up to Oregon and to the mountains and stuff. Um, it's just, like, it's really easy to hear yourself think up there and uh you know honestly i i think i figured something out about myself you know because i was i've been wondering about this for a long time you know like why do i do the stupid things that i do like the adrenaline seeking things and i think i kind of figured out like i don't have there are very few things in my life that I've ever chosen. You know, most things that have happened and that I've done in my life have been imposed upon me. You know, when you're a child, you do what your parents make you do. And then when I left home, I left home because I really felt like I had to. Um, everything I did as a runaway, I did because I felt like I had to. Getting into college, I did because I felt like I had to. And honestly, becoming a doctor is something I do because I feel like I have to. Um, I've shared this with some people before, but like, I feel like when I left home and put myself in that kind of position, um, I really forfeited a lot of the privilege of living for yourself, you know, living for myself, uh, because it was the kindness of other people that kept me safe a lot of that time. And I can never repay those people, but I can pay that forward, you know, I can... I can be kind and be there for other people. And that's the way I can repay what people did for me. And so I have this like weight that I carry around, this debt that I feel I owe to the universe. And I honestly believe that becoming a physician is the best way to clear that debt. You know, doing the best I can for, for everybody is the only thing I think I have left to do with my life. And so, you know, I didn't choose any of that stuff. I didn't even choose biology as a major. I picked biology because it was the one that would let me graduate the fastest. And yes, I ended up loving it, but it was not a, a choice up front. Pretty much the only thing I've ever chosen is motorcycling. <laughs> you know, one day I decided, you know what, I'm going to buy a bike. And I bought it. And I decided I'm going to be this guy that has the motorcycle that does these things. And I feel like that's my identity a lot of the time, you know, like people know me as that guy. I mean, people also know me as the nerd that gets really good grades. But again, that's not something I ever chose to be. That's something I did because like I didn't have high school. <sighs> <sighs> Always tired in the morning. I didn't go to high school. I got a GED and then I went to community college. So I felt like. Every single class I took at university, I had to get an A in. Otherwise, all the A's I made in community college would seem like, oh, I only got those because community college is easier. You know, so I already knew I wanted to get into med school. And I felt like if you get B's after transferring from community college and you're trying to get into med school, I think it gets a lot harder. You know, whereas I could say, look, I did this no matter what you put in front of me, as opposed to saying, like, oh, I did the best I could with, you know, the opportunities I had or whatever way you explain it. You know, that's just how I felt. I did not feel like I had a choice in the matter. I felt like I had to get an A in every single class I took. And then I, I did get a B at the end, but I was already in med school, so whatever. <laughs> um, 
But I was thinking about this because, like, I was thinking there are days, you know, where I've had to not have a motorcycle, right? Like, times where it was in a shop or times where it was raining too hard to ride it. And I always feel naked without my bike with me, you know, because that's my, like, it's attached to me. It's always with me wherever I go. There's my baby somewhere around. And I thought that was because I was just, like, in love with this inanimate object in a really unhealthy way. But I think the truth of the matter is that without my motorcycle, I don't feel like I have an identity. I feel like I'm a boring, blank, empty person. And I was thinking about this because... Um... I mean, it's always about a girl, right? Everything in life comes down to girls. I was thinking about a girl. And I was thinking about the kinds of things that she likes and doesn't like. And what I would do if I took her out on a date. Because, uh, well, just because I was. And I realized that, like, while I could, I could definitely pick things to do that she likes to do, um, I couldn't necessarily take her to do things I like to do and share them with her in a way that she would enjoy. You know, I don't have parts of myself to share with people because all I have is like negativity inside of me. Like I have anger and frustration and impatience. You know, and I don't really show that to people all that often. I try to show people the exact opposite of that. I try to show people, you know, kindness and and patience and understanding and those kinds of things but it's always a struggle you know I'm always fighting something else on the inside and the things I like to do like what do I like to do I like to ride motorcycles I like to play basketball I like to play video games I like to I, I don't know that's all I got <laughs> that's really all I got and most girls aren't down with motorcycles most girls are scared of them or think they're dirty or, or whatever you know so that's not something I can share um I like to dance. I like salsa dancing a lot, but you can only do that so many times. You know, it's like, it's that other thing. It's it's that, I don't know, that, that part of life that you get from just being around people a lot, I guess, that I didn't nev never got because I've never spent that much time around people. And so, like, and I realized, like, this is what happened in my relationships, too, like, with Esmeralda and with other girls that I've dated, like usually what ends up happening is we get into this pattern of like, well, I go and do the things I have to do and then I'll spend time with you when I can. But that spending time is always us just like sitting around, watching movies, drinking, uh, you know, doing boring stuff, stuff that I probably wouldn't even be doing if I wasn't with the girl, stuff that I'm only doing so that we can do something together. Because if I had my choice, like, yes, I, I really do enjoy being with people because being lonely is hard. But like what I'm doing right now, this long trip all by myself is kind of the only thing I've ever done. I do these things all by myself. And I don't know, I hope that I hope that I start to find more of a balance. and I start to discover more of who I actually am on the inside, and what I actually enjoy doing and that I find people that enjoy doing that, too. Um. You know, that was a lot to think about <laughs> as I was almost killing myself on these curves around the redwoods and climbing up hills and leaning off cliffs and stuff. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to go because I have some paperwork I need to do for med school and it's already like 10 o'clock and I need to check out at 11. And I want to I want to try to stop a couple more times before I get to the hotel I'm staying at tonight. And hopefully try to see the mountains today. If not, I'll have to go see them tomorrow. Maybe I'll go see them both days. You know, spend two days in the mountains before I go to Portland or Seattle. And then I'm going to start heading home. I should be home around Sunday or Monday. Anyway, uh, peace out, guys. Make sure to show love to everybody and everything you come across. And let good things come to you.